Okay. Now I gotta look at my calendar, figure out when I'm gonna get some fucking time off so I can do some good podcasting. Good morning, children. It is morning, it is. 0734. There's frozen global warming all outside on the ground, otherwise known as snow. Because we're all going to die because the world is overheating. Because Greta the Gremlin said so. I'm Greta. I'm a Gremlin. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> okay. All right. Well, that was, that was a good entry. Are you awake now? Thanks for coughing in our ears, great one. Fucking douchebag. Mm. This is me drinking the first cup of coffee. I was going to do this podcast last night, but honest to God, I just wasn't in the mood. I drank one beer, and everything was good, and then I drank the second beer, and my energy just plummeted. We just finished a whole bunch of fucking gigs. And long hours, although not as long as they could have been, it went pretty well. But, man, I ate a lot of shitty food. I ate some good food, too. Oh, man. Because we were... One of the gigs was at a hotel venue where I know people, and they hooked me up with some free food. Me and Yoga Pants Girl scarfed. They had this beef brisket. Oh, my God. Guys, I... I cannot even... On a scale of 1 to 10, I mean, this was, this was a true 10. This brisket was amazing it's just it it literally literally hitler almost melted in your mouth you barely had to chew it it was and it was so good oh the flavor oh it was delicious and then we had these brownies that were fan and then there's a chocolate mousse cake and it's like oh god we ate so much fucking food because they just it was left over from an event, and so there's like this this giant buffet of food, and Yoga Pants Girl and I just ate and ate and ate until I thought we were gonna die. <laughs> Man, it was so, we ate so much chocolate. She loves chocolate as much as I do. She had two brownies, and and these were not little brownies. These are cheap, big brownies. She had two brownies. I had a brownie and a piece of chocolate mousse cake. Oh my God, whoo! So I gained a couple of pounds over the weekend. There's two kind of gigs. There's two kind of weekend gigs, gig weekends. Sure, gig weekends that we have in this business. There's the kind where you lose weight because you're not eating anything. And then there's the kind where you gain weight because there's food everywhere. This was a gaining weight weekend. And then Dallas kept buying food. It's like, oh God. And I eat so, I've eaten more bread because pizza and sandwiches and pizza and sandwiches. I've eaten more bread this past weekend than I have in the previous month. All right, but none of that is what we're here to talk about. Hang on one second. Let me look at this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is this important? Yeah, I got I got to figure that shit out. So I'll tell you this. <clears throat> now you you heard on the cast here on the fuck can't talk. You heard here on the cast I was looking for a replacement to Dropbox. So I've been check. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Damn. So I've been testing out the Mega. Dot NZ which is a cloud storage, but it syncs like Dropbox did. So far, it's working out pretty good. In theory, I can synchronize my photos from my cell phone to my Mega account, and they'll upload automatically. I haven't yet quite figured out how to make that work, but other than that, it seems to be working fine. And apparently you can get achievements where you get extra space, extra storage space, but those expire. So I just got this notice that one of my achievements has expired. I I know it's stupid. See, this kind of shit, 
guy like this kind of shit, which is fine because my f free storage space is, what is it, 50 gigabytes? I'm using like three of them. I mean, I don't have a lot of stuff on this. I don't necessarily anticipate using 50 gigabytes, but who knows? But anyhow, the paid plan, I mean, the cheapest one is like five bucks a month. It's not bad. I may end up paying them under the thesis, under the theory rather, that if I pay for the service, I'll get some kind of better service. I mean, I don't know. We'll figure out. Anyhow, so far it's working. But it's just like, this sort of stuff is really annoying. Like, don't, it's, you, you, you got this achievement. You get more storage space, but then you take it away after a certain amount of time. Can, can we just, can you just give me X amount of space and just be done with it? Why does everybody have to complicate things? We try to turn shit into a game or into a fucking a reward thing or or whatever the fuck this is. Can I just can I just get something and know what I'm getting and it just be consistent? All right, none of that has anything to do with what we're here to talk about and I should get going cuz I got to go to Wayland Yutani today. All right. When I, oh I do have to tell you this story while I'm thinking about it. So a while back, Cappy posted the link to the article about more babies being born with syphilis, contracting it from the mother at birth. All right. And then, pretty sure I told you guys that, well, and yeah, not this week, last week, went out with my friends, brain, brain's trying to work, went out with my friends for our weekly drinking thing when we can all make it, and all of us were there for the first time in a while, including the, I don't think she has, I've never given her a code name, I've talked about her plenty in the past, she's the left-wing statist formerly fat girl who's still fat but not as fat because she had that bypass surgery done in her stomach and she's allergic to every food in existence this has gotten progressively worse we she doesn't go out with us very often anymore because she's so sick and if in case wondering no she's not a vegan or a vegetarian but i don't actually know what she eats because here's the thing she is And once again, this is this is nature telling you that your DNA is not supposed to be in the gene pool. I mean, imagine what I'm about to tell you. Imagine this happening a hundred years ago. She is so allergic to food that we cannot go to a place. She can't come with us to a place that serves any kind of food. We met at one of the local breweries that doesn't have food because she literally, literally Hitler, cannot enter a building that has food in it. Now, I don't know what this, what this, what this, uh, disease is called I don't know if she's making this up I don't know if this is her looking for attention I don't know if this is a, what do you call is it psychosomatic is that the right word where you're not really ill but your brain thinks you're I, I don't know what this is I don't but she can't be in the presence of food y yes you heard me right food you're saying great one do you mean gluten no 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 I mean food Period. Food. End of discussion. She can't be around food. What does she eat? I don't know. She can't go any place that has food. So anyhow, she was there for the first time. And it, it was good because we're having a few drinks. She doesn't drink, but the rest of us drink. And of course, we have to get on politics and I, I love fucking poking her. So we got, went through all this stuff. I told her about how I'd vote for Adolf Hitler and all this other stuff. 
and we get around and something something comes up and anyway I throw it out I'm like oh here's some more good news did you know that there's more babies being born with syphilis because they're contracting it from their you know contracting syphilis at birth and I said good job ladies and the fat girl who can't be around food looks at me she goes well you know it's not just women's fault and I said, oh, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of men out there who are also giving birth to babies with syphilis. And the point of it, once again, this is why you don't give women responsibility and you don't let them vote and own property and have jobs, right? To sit here and say it's not only the fault of women that babies are born with syphilis. That's, I mean, really, you're going to tell me that's not the fault of women, that men contribute to that thing. Men are giving birth to babies with syphilis. All the fuck. Women cannot take responsibility for a fucking thing. Anyhow, we had a good time. I ranted about stuff. Oh, I also ranted about women who own horses. That was fun. All right. We like 70 fucking hours into this podcast. I haven't got to the point yet. Let's get going. And yes, girls, babies being born with syphilis, that is 100% your fucking thing, okay? You're the ones giving birth. Oh, and then in the conversation, okay, then she actually says, well, maybe some of these women don't know they have syphilis. Okay. And then she says, maybe some of these women who are there giving birth, maybe they don't know they're pregnant. Now let's think about that for a minute. As we're sitting around talking about how women should be allowed to vote, imagine you're a woman. Okay, now, so your IQ just dropped by 25 points and you got lazier. Imagine you're a woman. Now, imagine you don't know that you're pregnant. Imagine that suddenly blood just stops coming out of your vajayjay. -jay. And imagine that you start gaining weight and you start having morning sickness and you start craving weird foods and you feel something in your stomach like moving around but you have no idea that you're pregnant she actually told she actually floated this some women don't know they're pregnant until they give birth this is a real thing guys she told me that some women there are some women out there who get pregnant and they don't know it until they actually have the baby And that's the excuse for more babies being born with syphilis. Because see, these women, they have syphilis. Well, they didn't know they were pregnant. These are the kind of people who vote for Hillary Clinton. We're also talking about the presidential elections. And she says, yeah, well, because we're talking about how I'm going to run for president in 2024. And they're like, well, you're not going to run in the next one? They're like, well, no, it's too late. Plus, I'm not going up against Donald Trump. She jumps in. She says, well, Donald Trump is never going to step down from being president. I'm like, this, this weird fantasy that leftists have, right? This is right up there with the weird fantasy of the Manosphereans that young people are having less sex and the Zoomers are going to save them. Is this weird fantasy that leftists have that Donald Trump yeah, I mean, okay, I know you saw the memes on the internet about how Donald Trump is the god emperor and all this other stuff. Yeah, that Donald Trump isn't going to step down from being the president. Like He's going to seize power. <laughs> and be like, <laughs> you people are so dumb. I mean, and now to be fair, I heard right-wing morons saying the same thing about Obama. Look, guys, Eight years of eight years of being the president, I'm pretty sure that's enough for anybody. Once again, I explained this and I was fucking attacked by leftists on the internet when I said this. You know, Obama became president. And I said, look, in eight years, this guy, he's going to be tired. He's going to be ragged out. He's going to have gray hair. He's going to be sick of this shit. You know, and it was like, oh, w, you hate Obama. No, no, no. I'm telling you just the fucking truth. Eight years of being president of the United States, having almost every moment of your life, unless you're Bill Clinton, you know, those times that you spent on Jeffrey Epstein's island fucking eight-year-old girls. But other than that, I mean, every, look at Bill Clinton. I mean, a lot of his mileage is from banging young girls. But 
I mean, anyone who becomes president of the United States, you spend eight years of your life being controlled and going here and going there and traveling here and traveling and constantly, almost constantly having to be on. You're in the on mode all the fucking time. Look at Obama when he left office. The man looks older. I mean, of course, he is older, but he looks visibly older. He's got the gray hair. He's just, you could tell, he's just like, can I just get the fuck out of here? I'm done. Yeah, I did my eight years. I did my sentence. I fucking paid for my crimes. Can I just get the fuck out of here and go relax? That's where Trump is going to be in eight, well, five years. He's just, you know, this, this thing, he's going to seize power and try to be president for the rest of his life. God, you fucking libtards. All right, none of that has to do with anything that we're talking about today. Good thing we don't tangent on this show. Speaking of shows where there is no tangenting, the goddamn bacon, currently binging on the goddamn bacon because I loaded up all his podcasts and I saw the goddamn bacon linked to the episode of Anarchy Moment that we're talking about today because we're doing, I'm going to read some listener responses to the previous edition of Anarchy Moment where I talked about a life of sterility or whatever the fuck I called it. And the goddamn Bacon linked to that in his most recent podcast episode. And I haven't listened to it yet, so I don't know what he talks about. But I'm sure it'll be interesting. So it is the goddamn Bacon. He's at thegoddamnbacon.com. I recommend his podcast. It's pretty entertaining. I had, I don't know, probably 10, 15 episodes of his podcast sitting there on the hard drive, loaded all that up and slogging through them. It's good shit. I wish I had some goddamn bacon right now. That'd be pretty good. All right. Are we ready? I think we might be ready. Should I go get more coffee? Should we go get more coffee? I should probably go get more coffee and then we'll start this. The podcast will officially start in about 60 seconds. All right, I'm back. We, we really are about to get started. Okie dokie. All right. We got this comment. I have glanced these over, but I haven't read them in depth. And if I am correct, well, this guy, his IP is Melbourne. And... This guy, he says in here somewhere, yeah, love from Australia. So we got the Aussies in the house. Fucking Australians are weighing in, man. The rest of you fuckers, nothing. Gotta get the fucking low down from the down under here. 
All right, let's not try to be clever. I'm too tired to be clever. Here we go. This is from a gentleman named Law. If I'm pronounced, if that's how it's pronounced, that's how it's spelled, L-A-W. Here's what he says. He says, hey, asshole. Recent listener, first heard about you. Oh, and by the way, you left a comment on the website asking about the email address, which I did not approve because, once again, the guys, if the, you want to send me an email, it's God. That's fur baby spelled backwards, God. It's C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-S-C.com on the interwebs. The email address is nowhere on the website. Number one, to prevent spam. But number two, I don't want emails from people who disagree with me. No, kidding. I don't want emails from people who haven't listened to the podcast. I don't care if you disagree with me, right? In fact, one of my best podcast series, Why Statism of Four Part, came because somebody wrote in an email saying that they thought I was wrong about something. And I was kind of, I, I, was, I was right, I was wrong, he was right, he was wrong, we went through it. Anyway, it's a great series, right? I do not want emails from people who haven't listened to the fucking podcast. That's why I only say the email address in the podcast. Because you have to listen to find out. And that has worked remarkably well as a filter. I get comments occasionally from people who obviously haven't listened to the podcast. But I don't get emails from people who haven't listened to the podcast. So that's a strategy. It's not a bug. All right. Hey, asshole. Recent listener. First heard about you a year ago from Cappy after he spoke highly of you. Your podcasts are a hoot. Very entertaining and funny. Are you sure you're listening? Are you sure you're not confusing me with somebody else? I don't ever mail the people I listen to, but in your latest Anarchy Moment, you asked for emails specifically to bounce our feedback off your ideas. So let's do that. All right, let's do that. Let's see what we got going on here. You start off with this concept of sterility. Agreed. I un- agree. I understand that. You were pretty concise with putting it into words. Are you sure you're listening to my podcast? Concise? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see concise means something different in Australia than it does here. Uh. All right. But you go on about how it's too late for you because you lack both money and quality women, which is paradoxical. Well, I mean, you can never have enough <clears throat> you can never have enough money. Am I wrong? No, you're not, because once again, I'm pretty sure I said this then, anyone who tells you money doesn't buy happiness is a moron. Uh, I know there are some people, you can't have too much money. No, no, you really can't. Because if, if, you know, this weird thing, I have too, I don't know, has anyone ever told me they have too much money? Have ever really heard anyone? I mean, leftists will sometimes say that when they're trying to virtue signal. But once again, you notice they're not giving any of it away. Because if you have too much money, it's not like you can't hand it to someone else. So anyhow, you can never have enough money. It's true. You say how there's no solution to your money problem, but you can move into a country where the cost of living is marginally better, get a high-paying job that's in demand, and start living that frugal life. Until along comes Mary. That or save up enough money where you are now and take it with you to a country where it's going to stretch a lot more than in the States. You said there's no solution. Well, that's definitely a solution. It mightn't be all the great. It it mightn't be all that great. He can write. I just can't read. It mightn't be all that great, but if I could have said something back to you in that moment, you talked about your money woes, it'd be that. Okay, that's all perfectly reasonable. So let's think about this for a second. Yes, yes, he's right. A person can always improve their financial situation. And I think from reading this over and glancing at it, and we'll find out as we go through this, I think once again, I think this is one of those cases where he's right and he's wrong. And it's 
It's the application. So all these strategies he's throwing out, absolutely true. As my first counterpoint is that as you get older, these things can become more difficult and more annoying. And I mean, let's sorry, let's try, let's not th do theories, theorizing. Let's use, because I'm the specific example here. So let's use me as the specific example. God, I can't talk. All of these things require a significant change in what I am currently doing, right? That's sort of what change is. Moving to another country, getting a different job, so forth and so on. Yeah. Now, just getting a getting high-paying job that's in demand. I mean, that's possible. That's a little bit tougher. Once again, because sticking with me as an example, first of all, I have to overcome my own inertia, right? Is that no? Inertia, kinetic potential, inertia. God, the fucking words. Starting something new, right, is always more difficult. So to somehow or another just get a higher paying job. I mean, sure you can, but there's all these things I got to fucking deal with in order to reach that point. To move to another country where the cost of living is better. Sure, once again, there's all this stuff you got to deal with. Now you say, well, yes, you do have to deal with things. That's called life. Life is, be life is dealing with things. So that's not really an excuse. And I think this is also part of you know, people claim they like change, but people really don't like change. And I certainly include myself in this. We get into our ruts, we get into our grooves, and we want to stay where we are. And bumping out of that is really difficult, you know. And everyone will, t Cappy will tell you this all day long. And yet you'll notice that Cappy is stuck in his rut and his groove, right? What does he do? He goes on YouTube. We got to make fun of, we got to make fun of Cappy a little bit. You know, he goes on YouTube to podcast and he complains about how YouTube sucks. And then he says, Chad, can you hear me? Chad, can you hear me? Chad, can you? Yeah, oh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? And then we do the can you hear me thing for like seven and a half minutes. You know, and then Cappy complains about how bored he is because he doesn't have anything to do. Right. I mean, everybody's in a fucking rut. You know, even people who complain about other people being in ruts like Cappy does and tells you to get out of your fucking rut and stop being lazy. We're all in a fucking rut. It's just difficult to see our own ruts because we're in them. All right, so could I get a higher paying job? I mean, if I have a skill set and I can find somebody who wants to pay me more for that skill set, I don't know what I'd get a higher paying job doing, except when I mean when I become president of the United States in 2024. And after that, I'm not going to step down. I'm going to seize power. I'm going to take control, build concentration camps. I'm going to build a wall. I'm going to do all the things Trump was supposed to do and didn't do. I'm going to round up all the people who are allergic to food and kill them off. <sighs> Maybe I could be a com I could be a comedian. <laughs> all right. Anyway, can I move to another country? Yeah. Um, can I I could save up a lot of money, not with the rent prices around here. Yeah, you know, I could, yes, I could do a lot of things. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, oh, I can't do those things because I am some kind of cripple or because the patriarchy is oppressing me, right? I'm not doing those things because I'm not willing at this point in my life to endure the slings and arrows 
that I would have to endure in order to do those things, right? I could live in a smaller place with some roommates or something like that and save up more money. I'm not willing, I'm absolutely not willing to live with other people. That's... So again, this is me, right? This is not something being forced upon me from the outside. Once again, this is not, oh, the patriarchy, you know, oh, the women's, oh, society. This is me. This is me imposing these limitations on myself. That's called self-awareness. Once again, this is what women don't have. This is why they shouldn't be allowed to vote, despite what all the cucks will tell us. Moving to another country could do that. I'm kind of sort of going to do that. If you're new around here, you may not know this. I will tell you. And see, and this this is part of what holds me back to some extent too, is that I do own a house. My house is in a small town down in Texas. My mother lives in that house now. My mother and my stepfather bought the house. Stepfather is dead. I actually own the house on paper. It's paid for. My mother lives there now, and when I hit whatever point, I mean, that's where I'm going. This small town in Texas, low cost of living, no fucking snow, nice house with three bedrooms and a kitchen and dining room and a ginormous living room, big backyard with pecan trees in it. That's, that's the great one's retirement plan. My mother asked me if I was going to sell the house after she dies or whatever. I'm like, hell no, I'm not selling. Why the fuck would I sell the house? It's paid for. I'm going to fucking live here. I mean, what kind of stupid ass idea is that? I can sell the house. I have a house. It's paid for. I think I'll sell it. I mean, why? So no, that's where I'm going to live. So that's, that is, to an extent, that's my low-cost foreign country destination. Okay, so that being a plan, that that puts a limitation on what I'm willing to do now. And I'm I'm reading your email again here. So anyhow, I was just checking to see if there's something else I needed to cover. So yes, I, I could jump jobs. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I actually started considering I should look around a little bit because I haven't done any kind of job hunting around for a while. I'll be the first one to tell you, and when you get a job, the first thing you should start doing is looking for your next job. And I've slacked off in that. But once again, I don't particularly want to hop jobs. Because as I've talked about fairly recently, I mean, where I am right now, you know, I'm second in command of the company. I get a lot of fucking privileges that I'm not going to get other places. I pretty much make my own fucking hours. Unless we're doing a gig, I go to work when I want to. I come home when I want to. I work from home in my pajamas with a beer in my hand. I mean, it's, it's not the greatest job in the world. No, not at all. But there's things a hell of a lot worse, too. And I got to put up with yoga pants, girl. Which is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing. But it's a good thing lately. She did a great job this last weekend. We worked our little asses off, but we did we did a spectacular show. Even better than normal. We got so many compliments on our lighting. <clears throat> So there's all that. I hear, what, what's, what's, what's the final point? The point is, yes, I could do these things, but there are self-imposed reasons that I'm probably not going to do those things. Because I'm at that point where I'm not miserable enough to make changes So I'm not going to make changes. And that really is what it is. And anyone who, most people, once again, most people are in that place. 
Anyone who tells you they're not is either lying to you or lying to themselves. Right? Most people are at a place in their life where they're not miserable enough to make changes. And the people who are miserable enough to make changes, well, they're changing things. All right, let's move on. Next up is you talking about the lack of marriable women in your vicinity. Nigger, you left. <laughs> you left. Nigger, you lit. By the way, you can't say the word nigger. Okay, I know in Australia, you guys think that. So this is the United States. We have freedom of speech, but see, black people control the language because they're oppressed. Okay, you're not allowed to say the word nigger. So let's not write the word nigger in any more emails because you're obviously racist. And that was sarcasm. But really, you can't say the word nigger. Like me reading your letter where you said the word nigger, right now, all the cucks listening to this podcast just shit themselves. Next up is you talking about the lack of marriable women in your vicinity. Nigger, you live in a lefty city in America. That's like trying to find a needle in a haystack of hay. And in fuck, that's like trying to find a needle in a stack of hay. All right. First of all, let me say this: you're right. You're also wrong because, well, all right. Trying to find a non-lefty woman, and see once again. Let's quant quant quantify, quantify. Qualify is the word. Qualify things here. Once again, these are these are all self-imposed limitations. Okay. And these self-imposed limitations I have are what make this an impossible situation for me. Let's say once again that my goal is I wanted to start a family. Okay. I'm not married. Well, fuck marrying. First of all, there's a part where I'm not getting married. That's the first problem. Because marriage is a contract between a man, a woman, and the government. Okay? So the first problem here is that I'm not getting married. Okay? Second problem is that I'm not going to marry a single mother or a woman who has syphilis or any other diseases. The other problem is I'm not going to marry a woman over the age of 25. And I'm not going to marry a woman with tattoos and piercings and weird nose, nose piercings and colored hair and stuff. My brain is shutting down for some reason all of a sudden. And so if you, you're not going to find, it doesn't matter where you are in the United States. Here's where I'm going with this. You can go to the most quote unquote conservative place in the United States. Finding a woman under the age of 25 who isn't a lefty is almost impossible. I mean, sure, there's a few of them out there. But then there's also the fact that none of them are going to be particularly keen on starting a family with me. Which, again, this I'm not I'm not blaming them. Right? I mean quite honestly, I would be a little bit suspicious of like some little twenty year old girl who came up to me and said, Oh, great one. I wanna you know, marry you and be your devoted wife and have children with you and stay home and homeschool those children. I mean, I, really? Okay. And I'd be looking around for the camera or something. Because again, th we have to be realistic here. So when I say there's no hope, I mean, this is like, right? I'm not going to become the CEO of Apple Corporation. It's just not realistic. And if I sit here and say, well, my my expectation or my goal or what I want is to be the CEO of Apple Corporation. Well, I've kind of set myself up for failure and I should be aware of that, right? So it's the same thing. If, and once again, I'm in that podcast that was theorizing in that direction. I should be clear that I am not sitting around here and now with this intention of, oh, fuck, I really want to start a family. Right? I I was saying that to have a family, 
at this point in my life, to be on the tail end of that would have been a good thing. If I did specifically say I'm trying to start a family now, that's not necessarily the case. And that's why I say it is too late. Because this is something that I should have done a long time ago. And that was part of the point of the podcast is once again, not that I think I can convince or save or persuade anybody or guide them or anything else because as I've said before, humans don't listen. We have to learn shit the hard way. But that was more a message to the younger people. You know, if you're early 20s before that, you know, if you're 30 or younger, if you have the slightest inkling that you might want to have a family in the future, you need to start thinking about this immediately. Because when you get to my point, it, it is, it's, sorry, it's too late. So while I'm using myself as an example, right, this isn't completely about me. This is about the process. So sure, I could, once again, I could invest all this time and effort in relocating to another city and getting another job and getting another place to live and making new friends to go drinking with and explain to them that, you know, men don't have babies with syphilis. Only women can do that. You know, yes, I could invest all that time in doing this. I could. Self-imposed limitation. I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I'm just, because it, it's not worth it and I'm not going to do it. So again, this is why I did the podcast is for young people out there to hear this and say, well, man, I'd, I'd like to have a family one day. And the great ones outlining all these things that he has learned through his life. And of course, because I'm young, I'm not going to listen to him. But if I was going to listen to him, I don't know, maybe I would go buy Reconnaissance Man by Aaron Clary. And I'd read that book and I, maybe I'd read Bachelor Pad Economics. And then maybe I'd think about, okay, what kind of woman am I looking for? And then maybe I'd do some research. I don't know, I'd do some reconnaissance, maybe, of different cities in the United States. And I'd find a place where I should go live. And maybe I would buy Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing a College Major. And I would major in something where I can make a lot of money. And maybe I'd go to the gym, right? And so maybe I'd do all of those things. And then I would not end up being a fucking failure like the great one himself, the founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society, who's been podcasting for almost 15 years. 15 years in what, like six days or something? So that's, that's, the, that's the bigger point than me whining about how I can't find any women worth marrying in Fort Collins. So you're not wrong, okay, Law? You're not wrong about anything here. This, but this is bigger than me. I know, that's hard to believe. <laughs> that any, anything could be bigger than me. I am the center of the universe. Okay, once again, could I do, could I leave where I am now and go on this quest for some marryable woman? Of course I could. Why? Because once again, we come back to, I'm not getting married. The institution of marriage, it's too fucking dangerous. I'm stupid. I am not that stupid. I'm stu I am sufficiently stupid that I would probably have sex with a chick without birth control and take the risk of getting her pregnant. I am that stupid. You know how stupid I'm not? I am not stupid enough to get married. That is, that is 100% off fucking limits. Okay, let us continue with the email here because we got a long way to go and we're running out of time. I, at some point, I have to go outside in the 14 degree weather and scrape the ice off of the $500 pickup truck and go to work. If marriage and progeny were really that important to you, I'm sure you'd have absolutely no hesitation moving about like a vagabond from town to town and state to state. You are absolutely correct. If 
marriage and progeny <clears throat> were really that important to me, I would do what's necessary to achieve those things. You, sir, are 100% correct. I have been preaching this for years. If whatever the fuck you're... T right, once again, I've said this. If helping homeless people was really so important to all these fucking leftards, why, they would take homeless people home with them. Yes, you are completely correct. You have summed it up right there. You can tell, I've said this for years and years and years, you can tell what is really important to people based on what they do. Right? Podcasting is important to me. That's why I've done this for 15 fucking years. What people do is what's important to them. When someone says to you that something is important to them and they're not doing it, they're lying. Right? When people talk about global warming, glo we have to save the earth, really. Well, do you drive a car? Oh, so you burn fossil fuels. That's how you know what's really important to people. You look at their actions. So marriage is not important to me. Children, once again, I, I, I'm not cruising to have children now. If I'd have had children 20 years ago, that could have been okay. Let's get back to the email. Whether a, whether abroad in your country saying, quote, there's no women's I can marry, he spelled it correctly. Oh, oh you spelled women's wrong. It's W-O-M-Y-N-Z, not W-O-M-Y-N-S. It's okay, though. It's okay. Not a problem. There's no women's I can marry is an excuse, not a reason. You get me? Yeah, I, I get you. Um, is it an excuse or a reason? It's... Okay, you're right in the sense that somewhere out there, there is a women's that I could marry. Except that marriage is completely out of the question. And if she is marriageable material, that's not marriageable, if she's marriage material, tried to combine two phrases. If she's marriage material, she's not a women's, right? She's a woman. I was going somewhere with that, and then it just popped right out of my tiny little brain. Oh, is it an excuse or a reason? It's a fact. Uh, no, it's but it's not a fact. It's 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 a reflection of okay. How do let me let's go through the process. Are there women's that if I was willing to get married would be marriageable? Yes. There is a, you have to go through the long process of locating those women's. <laughs> and that requires, because there are so few of them, a huge time investment. So am I willing to make that time investment? No, I am not. Once again, I don't call that, I'm, I can't call that a reason or an excuse. I call that a self-imposed limitation. I'm not willing to make the time investment. Again, that's the point of the original podcast is to younger people. Hey, guys, if that's something you think you want in your future, start making the time investment now. Because to find this marriageable woman's, this is going to take, right? This isn't like we're women when they turn 38 and a half and they go down to the husband's store and just pick up a husband, right? We are men. We are realistic. We're not stupid. We understand that if you want to have children and you want to have a wife and you want to have a traditional household, you've got to find a woman 
who is going to be capable of all of that, who qualifies for all the things you need her to qualify for. And if you're realistic, you know that that is a small number of women. And if you're realistic, you know you're going to have to go through a lot of women to find her. And if you're realistic, which we are because we're men, you need to start sooner rather than later. Okay, once again, to, to go forth and to journey across the United States and find this one woman worthy of marrying me, how many years is this going to take? And see, this is the thing. He's saying you can make all these changes in your life, and he's right. How long does all of this take? You don't just move to another country and get a high-paying job in a week. Right? You don't just go out and find this marriageable woman in a week. It takes years to do all of this stuff. And again, this is the point of the podcast for the youngins to say unto the youngins, guys, if that's something you think you want in the future, you can't be like a woman and wait until you're 38 and go to the husband store. You need to start now. You need to start working on making the monies now you need to start work on working on finding the honeys now because it is going to take you years and that's not you you want to invest years into that right if you want the traditional family you want to invest years into your career and making money and get where you're making big bucks and then bank the money, bank as much money as you can for years. Save up till you've got, you know, truly a million dollars in the bank or something. You want to spend years banking up that money. You want to screen women. You want to spend years dating women, getting experience, you know, date the psychos. Don't take them home. Don't tell them your real name. Don't tell them how much money you make. Okay. Date the psychos, see the red flags, learn the red flags, then date the ones that might be normal and screen, 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 screen. This shit takes years. So law is saying you can make these changes. Yes, you can, but it takes years to do all of this stuff and to do it right. And once again, yes, I know there's those outliers who you know, wake up one morning and apply for a job and instantly start making a million dollars or something. And then as they're going home from their first day at work where they got their $1 million cash bonus, they run into this woman who they marry a week later and they live happily forever. That's great. Most of us are not in that category. Let us continue. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Excuse, not a reason. You get me? It's like saying that you can't get fit because there's no gym in your immediate area. If you really wanted to get in shape, you wouldn't let the lack of a nearby gym stop you from getting what you want. I know you better than anyone that when you put work, when you put, oh, I know you know better than anyone. I have to read this correctly. I know that you know, that I know that you know, that I know that you know better than anyone that when you put in the work, effort, and time, you get results. In the real world, though, this rule doesn't always hold true. True. But doing something, anything, like your example of Mr. Super Nigger, we can't say the word nigger. Your example of Mr. Super Nigger in the very beginning of the podcast of him trying to take his destiny into his own hands is better than not doing anything at all. Absolutely. That's why the guy impressed me because he wasn't, he didn't have any kind of fucking, you know, victim mentality shit oozing from him the way most black people in the United States do. Walking around, oh, Whitey's holding me down. If he believes he's destined for greatness, truly believes it, who's to say he isn't? I completely agree. I, the man might go somewhere. Belief powers actions, actions shape reality. True. But hey, he's going to find out for himself in the future whether he becomes a diamond under the pressure of life or crumbles like an old crusty sidewalk, like old crusty sidewalk dog shit. Yeah, we have a lot of crusty sidewalk dog shit here in Fort Collins. 
because fucking dog owners with their fur babies, they let them shit on the sidewalk and leave it there. Let's back up for one second because you talked about the gym as an analogy. Now, see, that's that's an imperfect analogy. And the, some of the people, there's no such thing as a perfect analogy. Oh, shut up. See, here's the thing. Now, here's another here's another difference here between the what we will at this point will call a traditional family. All right, so let's define our terms so that I can use this for the rest of the podcast. If I say traditional family, I'm referring to actually maybe even more than that. I'm referring to what I consider the ideal. Okay? The man has the job makes plenty of money so that the family wants for nothing. You have a wife who is thin and pretty and sane. And you have the children's and the wife stays home and raises the children's. Okay? So that's what we're going to define. That's when I say family, that's how I'm defining that. Now, see, that's an end point with a bunch of components. Now, be going to the gym and becoming more fit, that's right up there with somebody says, well, I want more money, okay? And you hand them a dollar, now you have more money. Are you happy? Shut up. It's an incremental thing. Going to the gym, I went to the gym yesterday. It's right down the hallway, thank God, because it's cold outside. I didn't want to go to the real gym. But I went down to the fucking gym here and lifted weights. I'm a little bit stronger, but I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not competing in weightlifting competitions I'm not Mr. Universe, right? Going to the gym and getting stronger is something you can do incrementally if you're just trying to get stronger because there's not an end point. Now, see, if you say, well, I am going to win the Mr. Universe. Is it Mr. Universe? What the fuck is that thing? I know there's the weightlifting competitions. We'll call it Mr. Universe. And if I'm wrong about what it's called, that's fine. Now, if you say, I am going to become Mr. Universe, there's a lot of things you have to do to get there, but you're not there until you're actually there. It's the same thing with having this this family that I've conjured up and fantasized about. There's things you do to incrementally get there, but the incremental steps are not being there. They don't really count for the goal. I don't know if that made sense. That may or may not have made sense. And if it doesn't, that's fine. I'll think about it some more. All right. Let's continue. Women being weaponized against men is definitely an issue and a real phenomenon in Western countries. Get out, travel around, get a broader perspective. Yeah, I could. I could make that time investment, but once again, I'm, just, I'm not going to. Because I'm choosing to not invest. I don't need to get out and travel around. I'm travel- I mean, I'm not trying to be a smartass. Travel to where? I'm, I'm not going to travel to some third world fucking shitholes. What, travel to what? California? Oh, I just said I'm not going to third world shitholes. I don't need to travel around and get a broader perspective. I just... Why? And I'm not trying to be an... I'm at... Why? I mean, what does that... How does that help me here? What does that do for me? You can convince me. But why? Why? For all I know, you actually have, and you're speaking from a place of worldly experience and wisdom, but you don't address this much. Uh, no, I haven't done a whole lot of traveling and shit like that. I've done a few things in my life. I mean, you know, I'm not a fucking... I've had some jobs. I've done some things. I've been fucked over. I've made mistakes, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not completely naive in the ways of the world, but I'm also... I mean, I'm not Adam Piggott. I'm not Roosh. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't know why, 
I need to get out, travel, or I, I have a broader perspective. Oh, no, no, my perspective, my perspective. Okay, here we go. My perspective has been broad. I've broadened my perspective. And that's how I now know things, right? I know that women are weaponized. I know that giving birth to babies and giving them syphilis at birth is bad and that only women do this, men don't do it. I know that there's men and women and people who don't know which they are are either confused or mentally ill. I know that taxation is theft. I know how to make a flat place on the ground, right? I know that if there were no government, the corporations wouldn't take control of the world because corporations don't work without governments. I don't need to fucking broaden my fucking perspective. Broadening your perspective is something you do when you're eight years old, right? If you're 50 and you're still running around trying to fucking broaden your perspective, it's too late for you. By the time you're my fucking age, you should know the difference between yes and no and right and wrong and up and down. There's no perspective to fucking broaden here. It's my opinion on that for the moment. Also, for the record, I know you said this podcast is for us. I said that. Let's see, are you sure you're listening to me? This podcast is for me, goddammit. Fuck you. So me droning on and holding all your arguments against you, against yourself, might seem like I'm not getting it. But replying to your praxis in hypothetical is gay, so I'm using you as an example. No, that's, that's fine. Right, because we can talk about shit in the abstract all day long, and sometimes that is a good thing. But then sometimes we do need to talk about specifics. And I don't mind using myself as a specific here because it forces... Yeah, when, you, when you use specifics, it forces you to narrow things down and be very precise. Because in the abstract, you can just throw shit around. Okay, the next part. Okay, this next part isn't a whetstone to sharpen your ideas on, but just an observation. I have to say something about because I caught you... God, I can't read. Because I caught you out, you little cheeky cunt. Oh, okay, here we go. At 56 minutes in, you talk about how if there wasn't any government, you'd kill all the people who are taking measures to make sure your life as to make sure your life is miserable as fuck, is what you meant to take. Then at 48 and 1 hour 50 seconds, you talk about how status seem to think that if we're no government, everyone would go around killing each other. Well, which is it? You can't have both. But hey, don't delude yourself. If, if there was no government to protect the parasites, I genuinely think there would be a brief... Okay, good. You just answered the question exactly the way I was going to answer it, I think. Let's keep reading. I genuinely think there would be a... If there was no government to protect the parasites, I genuinely think there would be a brief period of extreme violence and killings before a hopefully long period of peace thereafter. Let's not lie to each other with no gooberment what's stopping you from finally taking out your enemies. There's no moral high ground, and those that try to find one and take it don't deserve to live, as you say. Okay, you answered your own question. That's exactly the answer I'm going to give. When I say that people wouldn't run down the street killing each other, this is you know, a thousand years ago. This wasn't as much of a problem. Right now, yeah. I mean, if the government vanished right now because while with the government here to protect the parasites and the inferior people, it's the parasites and the inferior people that have bred. So yes, if the, gov if the government vanishes, there is going to be a bunch of killing because there was a time when if you were a sociopath or all, whatever the fuck, all these weird people... You wouldn't have reproduced and your DNA wouldn't have be passed on, right? If you were a rapist, you'd have raped some woman and then her family or her friends or her husband or her brother or her son or whatever, someone would have found you and killed you, right? Now, if you're a rapist, you rape women, they have the babies so they can get government welfare, and the government puts you in a hotel called a prison where you have sex with female prison guards and continue to make more babies and the broken DNA gets passed on. So, in a human society where the broken DNA isn't passed on and kept alive and encouraged, 
people would not run down the streets killing each other. We don't live in that society. We live in a society here in the United States. I can't speak for you guys down under. Where we've encouraged the broken DNA. We've specifically bred the broken DNA. Because remember, if you don't need the government, the government doesn't need you. The government needs people that are broken. So yeah, you're right. If the government vanishes, there's going to be this brief period where... And I think what's going to start it is the sociopaths and the parasites and everything, you know, if the government goes away, like all the people on welfare are going to think that they're still entitled to free stuff. And so they're going to go out and they're going to start rioting or whatever. They're going to start trying to steal food. And then the normal people are going to shoot them. It's not going to be the normal people are going to go parasite hunting, right? The parasites are going to force the normal people to kill them because the parasites are going to riot. The parasites are going to start demanding things in the absence of a government to give them those things and in the absence of the government to protect them. Right? Once again, if there's a riot, there's a bunch of people looting your store, you shoot one of them, what happens? The police are going to show up and arrest you for protecting your property. The police aren't going to do anything to the rioters. God, no. Well, that's freedom of speech. Why? They're just poor, disadvantaged, poor people. Right? Same thing, same thing again with the rapist. Man rapes a woman. Well, the police show up. What do the police do? The police protect the rapist from the wrath of the woman and the men in her life who would kill the rapist. Right? That's what the police are there for. The police are there to protect the criminals from the consequences of their criminal activities. And thus we get more crime. Once again, I don't know why this is so hard to understand with all the statists out there. Let us move on because we still have a long fucking way to go. And what time is it? Oh, Jesus Christ, I've really got to get going. We may, uh, you know what? We may have to do it too. I was going to do both of these emails, both of these messages in one. I don't think I can fit that in. So we're just going to do laws. Here we go. Now people tend to fill the sterility in their life with things. Absolutely true. Consume, consume, consume. Once again, this is why the state, the government, the corporation is one of the reasons why they're so focused on destroying the family unit, destroying the nuclear family, destroying the bonds between human beings. And again, I've used myself as this example lots of times. I know good and goddamn well because I have self-awareness that I'm buying something to fill a space in my life, right? Or I'm playing a video game because I'm, I'm filling a space. I know this. Stupid things, useless fucking things. I've got friends who are super fucking heavy into their drugs, cars, and whores. I love them to pieces, but they're dumb as fuck and unsalvageable, right? See, yoga pants girl is all into her cars. She doesn't want to have children. She, I hate children. I'm like, oh God. And and you know, and again, and yoga pants girl is one of the better ones. She really is. Of all the women I've met in my life, yoga pants girl is easily in the top one percent. Yeah, I hate children, but she she loves her cars. See, I want to have a house with a garage full of cars. That those are her kids. That's her. That's her, what she fills her life with, is her cars. I, of course, fill my life with Supergirl statues and yelling at the internet and complaining about snow. Yes, yeah, I could move somewhere that doesn't have snow. Yes, I could. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> moving on. Keep her moving. Sometimes you can see sparks of intelligence in their eyes, but for, but for them to actually listen to you and acknowledge... What? Hold on, typos. For you to, blah, blah, blah. for them to actually listen to you and acknowledge that what they're doing isn't helping solve the sterility in their lives means that they now have to hold themselves accountable for all the actions they've taken in their lives 
of their own free will to ease their own pain and discomfort of discovering or keep from discovering the sterility we all suffer from. Yes, once again, we self-awareness. I've been preaching, you, you're, if you say you're new, you don't know this. I've been preaching self-awareness for years, years and years and years and years and years. Self-awareness. Fucking know what's going on with yourself. And once again, I'm not saying you never fuck up. God, for, if anyone thinks I'm saying that you should never fuck up, then no, 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 no. Just be aware when you're fucking up. I fuck up all the time. I'm probably fucking, I probably fucked up in the last 10 minutes. I'm probably going to fuck up in the next 10 minutes. Okay? But be aware that you're fucking up. Be aware of what's going on. And take responsibility. Let's get this is what separates us from women, right? Well, it's not just women's fault that babies are being born with syphilis. I mean, are you fucking out of your goddamn mind? And that's the female mindset, right? The female mindset is always, always to seek a way to blame someone else. Well, it's not, it's the patriarchy. It's men doing this to us. It's not me. Where are all the good men, right? I don't want to sit here and be like, where are all the good women? No, I know there aren't many. They're out there, but it's not, where are all the good women? I understand that, okay, here's the difference between men and women. Men go, hmm, where are the good women? And if you really want the good women, then you take the action necessary to locate and attract the good women. Women go, where are all the good men? And then women sit there and try to use the power of guilt and peer pressure and marketing to convince men that men should be attracted to old fat women with tattoos and piercings. Men take action to locate and achieve what they desire. Women try to force other people to give these women what they want. And do you know what, great one? I do know what, but what, what do you got? No one wants to do that, right? <laughs> right, no one wants to do that. No one wants to hold themselves accountable for the actions they've taken. Once again, this is why I'm not woes meing. I'm talking about, hey, these were my fuck-ups. Maybe you can learn from this, right? This is, I, I, I can look back on my life and I see fuck up after fuck up after fuck up. And ultimately, you know, I can sit here and once again, I can say, oh, my, I didn't have a proper father figure and, I, and Aaron Cleary didn't write bachelor pad economics when I was 16 because he's short and he plays too much golf. You know, and I can make all these fucking excuses. And there's a little bit of truth to them, right? I mean, Aaron Cleary didn't write bachelor pad economics when I was 16 years old. And he is short. Adam Piggott didn't write Pushing Rubber Downhill when I was 16 years old because he's from Australia and everything's upside down, right? But ultimately, who's ultimately responsible for my life? I am. Are there external factors that influence my stupid decisions? Of course there are. But ultimately, who made the stupid decision? It was me. And that's part of the message of that podcast is to the younger people who might be willing to fucking look ahead and think, not shove their heads up their asses. Guys, all your decisions ultimately come down to you. No one wants to do that. They'll all double down before that happens. Believing lies because lies are soft and soothing, whereas the harsh truth is harsh, whereas the truth is harsh and sobering. You are correct. All right. You're, hold on. You're typoing here. And often one of the lies you have a particular, all right, one of the lies you have a particular distaste for is the God pill. And I get it. To completely accept it means to accept everything in your life as all God's plans, thus robbing you of your own free, I assume you mean free will and accountability for your actions. It's as much a cop-out as it is a coping mechanism. 
But as bad as it is for being an obstacle in the way, stopping people from becoming self-aware through suffering the full psyche of their own mind, it's not at all the worst fate to happen to them. Let me remind you, being a junkie is far worse. And like I mentioned, I've got friends, cousins, uncles, and aunties using drugs to help escape this reality because they're so fucking weak-willed they can't fathom facing it sober. That is... Okay. Now I'll say this. I don't necessarily... I hadn't thought, this, I hadn't thought about this before. Because I know there are some people who make the argument that if there's a God, God has a plan, that means you don't have free will. I'm not sure that I would say God and free will are incompatible. I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole. But I don't know, right offhand, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not willing to say that. God and free will are not incompatible. Are not compatible? I think God and free will could be compatible. I have to think it through a little bit, and I haven't done that. Anyway. Anyway, as you write right here. Anyway, more on the God pill. I can guess you aren't very religious, but the very first story in the Bible is the creation mythos of Adam and Eve. I actually have read the first bit of the Bible. And hey, you know what? One of these days I would like to sit down and read the Bible, not because I believe that it is some word-for-word -word truth, but I think it's, it's, it's literature. It's good literature. It's literature that survived the test of time. Adam has God, sure, but God isn't there for him to physically love. He has animals, food, and a paradise to live in. Right, kind of like being on welfare. All of the physical comforts met but one. So God creates Adam a bitch and yada yada. I think you know where I'm going with this. Even in the Bible, they acknowledge that men only need women to complete themselves, but they go out of their way to say that they were made. Wait, did I read that correctly? Even in the Bible, they acknowledge that men not only need women to complete themselves, but they go out of their way to say that they were made for each other. And if you look at how incompetent women are compared to us, you could almost believe it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Personally, I'm not religious, spiritual, sure, but not at all interested in invisible sky daddies. That's a, I like that phrase, invisible sky daddy. I kind of like that. But I do have enough knowledge on the subject to know you really don't know what you're talking about when you talk about it. What's the subject? The God pill? So either do some research so you can critique it more precisely. We're playing the pronoun game. Critique what more precisely? It. It doesn't tell me anything. So either do some research so you can critique it, whatever that is, more precisely or don't, but I'd rather you did because I just love your particular flavor of bastard. The Bible and other spiritual texts were written by men, not a god, and it has the collective wisdom of men from thousands of years ago in many different cultures. I agree with that. Yeah. Some people just drink the holy water Kool-Aid too hard, but looked at with a sharp, critical mind, there's lessons to learn from, though little they might be. And again, sure, I mean, it's. I think the Bible has lots of lessons to learn. Just don't take every single thing in there literally, literally Hitler. Literally Hitler. Anyway, I'm sure you just loved reading this. There's a hell of a lot more I can say, but I have a life. Ha! But I think I've put enough of my time into something you might not even read. If you did, that's great. Please don't read this on your podcast. Oh, shit. No, I'm kidding. This doesn't say that. Keep doing what you do. Oh, don't worry. I will keep fucking whining like a little bitch. I love your stuff, you tremendous fucking theater fag. <laughs> Love from Australia. Come visit us sometime, cunt. All right. Well, you know, if I ever if I can get Adam Piggott to take me to Australia so I don't fucking go to the wrong places and get bit by poisonous snakes and shit like that. Okay. Wow, we plowed through that. How long did that take? Holy shit. Hour 20 minutes. You guys still alive out there? 
All right, I have to get my ass moving. I would probably drone on some more, but I really, I gotta get this posted so you guys can hear it, and then I gotta fucking go. So we're gonna end this right now. I'll probably do a little bit of follow-up on this in the next podcast, because I'll have some time to have thought about it as well. All right, thanks for listening. You guys stay warm. Later.